It's already the new year, and this will be posted already during the new year in 2023, but I thought I would share my favorite fossil hunting finds of 2022. Let's just start with all the finds from St. Thomas. Now, these technically, these are more honorable mentions and not uh, finds that I've personally found in St. Thomas, though I did some fossil hunting with a friend there. These were actually found by my friend. This one is, if you can see, there's a nice brachiopod in this um, kind of limestone-y, limestone probably like a dolomitic limestone uh, rock, and you can actually see there's another one of the same brachiopod. But this is a Leptinia uh, brachiopod. Uh, I'm sorry if I butchered the pronunciation. There, uh, the name will be posted somewhere on the screen for people to see. Next, we have this guy, which is... I can't remember if I found this. I might have found this in the creek looking for fossils with my friend, but I could be wrong. That's, I think this might have... I'm pretty sure my friend found this one or two. Uh, this one is a... A uh, group of little coral um, fossils, little, that's subjective, of either, it's a either Syringopora um, fossil colony kind of thing, or a, um, a er, Eridophyllum fossil coral. Um, I don't know the difference between the two. People have told me it looks like I uh, like one or the other. And when I look up examples, I find examples that look very similar to what I have in my hands. And I did read like that the difference is that the size, the syringopora is a um, smaller in diameter, whereas the um, iridophyllum is larger. Um, and um, but I don't know if that's necessarily true because I read that on a fossil ID form. So um, who knows? Maybe that person was uh, making stuff up. So I'm a little unsure. I'm talking to people right now to kind of figure it out. But it's a cool little kind of coral fossil specimen. Now next is probably my favorite fossil that is in, or one of my favorite fossils in my fossil collection. It's definitely like holds the top place with a couple, a couple other uh, fossil specimens I have in my collection. It's this nice large um, elder gops uh, rana trilobite. Um, this one was found by my friend too in uh, the St. Thomas region of Ontario. Um, as you can see, some of it was eroded away. So it's not whole, but it's still a very large and pretty, like, it's missing like 5%, I would say 5%, maybe 10% of its body, but it is a uh, wonderful trilobite to have in my uh, collection. Up next, we have the finds from the Fort er Erie area. We went to uh, a quarry in that area on a uh, mineral collecting slash fossil collecting uh, club trip. Uh, mostly fossil collecting, but I did find some interesting mineral specimens and I will put some uh, like b-roll after Showing you this awesome platycera uh, Fossil that I found I found this one spot where I found Three gastropods in a row Not whole But still pretty decent. Look at this guy That's a nice one. And then there's a little small hole a whole one. I'll try and pop it out and this one I found somewhere else. And this is an interesting little horn coral. Like a really small one. I don't know if it's a species I've collected before. So I'll keep it and show it to people. And just a nodule of chert. This is probably, it probably would be uh, what would be considered on a dog a chert. Here is another platycera I found. It's uh, partially damaged but that parcel damage has actually exposed the inside which has been turned into chert or filled in with chert depending it probably is more um, accurate but you can see all the way to the very end of or very inside of the uh, platycera fossil 
it's been filled in with chert. Here's another uh, Leptinina uh, brachiopod fossil. It was a, uh, one of the best brachiopods actually I pulled out of uh, that quarry. Almost whole. I think there's just a bit of damage on both corners. Just very minor amounts of damage and maybe some up here as well. But a very cool brachiopod nonetheless. Now, this one is an interesting one because I believe it is a brachiopod, but I could be wrong. But the insides have uh, silicified with this fossil. And then the outsides kind of got some, like, maybe pyrotization or some other type of dark mineralization. Quickly, before I go to a new pile that we just got permission to go at, I thought I'd show you this cool gastropod uh, geo that has druzy quartz. And then that white chunk is a piece of calcite and then those white puffs on the left side i think might be by uh barite i'll have to look under the uh, microscope to try and figure it out now this was probably my favorite find um it's a inside a uh, hollow platycera fossil that the inside has been filled in with jeruzy quartz and then uh calcite and then there is this other interesting white mineralization and I'll probably actually, if I can, I'll throw up a uh, zoomed in image or video of this. I recently got a new uh, magnification, uh, electric magnification camera that seems to be better quality than my old one. So hopefully I'll be able to give you a clearer picture of what that looks like magnified. Finally, we get to the Hungry Hollow finds. It was a very beautiful fall day when I got to go fossil collecting there. And I really enjoyed that trip. I got to see friends and I got to collect some awesome fossils. Here are a couple nice uh, small favocyte um, fossils. I believe they're two different species. Next, we got this uh, trilobite head. Um, this is actually a head of a green ops uh, trilobite from uh, Arcona, Ontario. From It was collected just like in the Hungry Hollow. And you can tell that it's a green ops and not a rana because it has this little like lip basically. And I'll also try and get a nice magnified uh, look at this guy as well. Here is a nice button coral. Uh, this was the largest one I found. I've heard of ones being found larger, but this was this is the largest one I've seen in person. So I was pretty happy with this find. And they can get larger. I've heard them get to like the size, if you're very lucky, the size of a quarter, which is like super rare. But usually they're smaller than this, and then this is like the largest one I've seen personally. Here we have uh, two um, horn corals that I collected. They were just almost complete. Uh, there's, of course, just a bit of damage on the feet or the where they would be anchored, like their anchor point, I guess you would call it. Um, they're two different species, so their names will be respectively to the right and to the left of them. Um, but these were just two... Uh, nice horn corals and like a good representation of the quality of fossils you can find at the hungry hollow the fossils there are very well preserved and they're very easy to collect honestly like so much of it is just like out there in the open even though this is just a tiny fragment this is actually a tiny fragment of fish bone from a placoderm. And for those who don't know what a placoderm is, I'll throw up some pictures of some examples. Uh, there are some of like the early fish um, fishes out there. And they're kind of like known for having um, like these bony armor plates. And this one is, this is a probably a bone fragment by the looks of it. I'll uh, do some zoomed up uh, close-ups of this guy. You can tell that this is a bone fragment because it's kind of the, the bronzy brown with the blue. And that's how you tell the bones apart. I don't know what causes them to go blue. Um, but the fish bones found at Hungry Hollow are blue slash bronzy brown. 
and I'll try and throw up some close-ups of this guy and see if we can see any of the uh, like the individual cells of the uh, bone or something. Now I didn't find a whole trilobite at the Hungry Hollow, but I did find well, I don't know, I don't think this guy is whole, but it would be cool if he was whole and he just needs to be exposed more. But I did find this, what looks to be a large um, Elder Gops Rana head. And who knows, maybe I can uh, get my friend to prep this for me and expose it and see if there's more of this guy. Yeah, oh, maybe I can convince him by trading him some mineral specimens or stuff that he's interested in. Um, but it's uh, it was still a cool find, though some people got pretty lucky. And all um, and one guy he found an absolute l l gigantic, well, gigantic compared to like ones I've seen come out of there, an absolute large. Uh, trilobite roller and I'll throw a picture of that up so that you can see uh, what I'm talking about. Last but definitely not least is this plate of tentaculites. This is probably my favorite find of the whole season. I found this in a section where I remembered uh, another collector the year before finding some very nice tentaculite plates. So I just for the heck of it went out to that little section and there weren't a lot of fossils but sure enough there was one layer that these uh, tentaculites got exposed and there were a couple smaller plates some I gave away to um, newer collectors so that they could have some cool tentaculite samples and a couple I kept including this large uh, this this one which is the uh, largest plate that I found and you can see there's some pretty nice tentaculites in there. Um, and it's actually interesting. Tentaculites, people don't really exactly know what they are. Some people suspect that they're brachiopod uh, related to the brachiopods because they have some features that are found in brachiopods, where some believe they might be some kind of like a worm or something or mini cephalopod or something. There's like a whole bunch of debate on what it could be. Very cool fossils. We have reached the end of this video. I would like to thank you guys for watching uh, the video. Uh, please do leave a comment below on which was your favorite fossil. And just have a good day. And I will see you guys in the next video.